looking over my safari club list for my obsession quest that said bison, but it didn't say American bison or wood bison. So what was I to do? I think I'll go take both of them. I head to Canada for the wood bison and we drop back in and take the American bison. Two 2,500 pound bisons hit the dirt. Bass Pro Shops and Alamosito's Ranch present Bob Folkrod's Hunting Adventures. Seven continents, 80 species, a five year quest in the making. High adventure, dangerous game. Real-world training tips. This is Bob Fulgrod's Hunting Adventures. Once found throughout the Northern Hemisphere, the buffalo has always played a totemic role for the human societies it lived alongside. For Ice Age hunters, it represented strength and fearlessness. For Plains Indians, the animal was the centerpiece of a religion that revered all living things. For early pioneers, it symbolized a false limitlessness, an error that almost caused its extinction. For modern Americans, the buffalo is a symbol of renewal, of our ability to heal the wounds of the past. People always ask, you know, why would you hunt, uh, you know, the, the bison like that, whether it's American bison or the, or the, the wood bison. You know, they're not uh, as leery as an elk or a, a brown bear or something like that, but, uh, you know, ever since I've seen them on TV and watching cowboys and Indians and, you know, on TV and watching American settlers go across and, and watching them hunt the, the bison, it's something I've always wanted to do. And then when I started this obsession quest, it was high on my list to make sure that was, that was uh, done. The wood bison is the largest terrestrial animal in North America and Bob will need to travel deep into Alberta's North Country to find one. These things are called wood bison for one reason. They live in the woods and when you get that cover of the woods, boy, they can hide quick, you know, so unless they're coming out to feed in that green grass, it's, it's pretty hard to hunt them and locate them. Encompassing nearly 45,000 square kilometers, Wood Bison National Park is Canada's largest. It was formed in 1922 to protect a small herd of free-roaming wood bison. Canada's conservation efforts have been a great success, so much so that the population has surged and now requires hunting to keep it in balance. I heard the expression, grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Well, in this case, grass is always greener on the other side of the river. This river right here separates where we hunt where we can. That's the Wood Buffalo National Park, and you can see by just the tracks, there's fresh tracks and old tracks, and they've been crossing this river a lot. They go up here to these grass flats. That's where we're gonna be looking for them, trying to find them out in those grass flats so we can hunt them. We didn't uh, use the rain gear so much as for it raining, uh, you know, during the day. But I did put the rain suit on because we had quite a, quite a four-wheel ride back and forth, and you know, mud puddles, and you know, getting that mud up onto you. So I'd always put the rain suit on just basically to keep the mud off of my hunting clothes on the way in and the way out. Buffalo hunts are just more difficult in some reasons because you got to catch them out of the park, and if you're not there at the right time, and they're there, and then. If they're there and you're not, you're never going to see them. But if you catch them at the right time when the weather's good and everything, you could get a good opportunity to shoot one of them. Buffalo hunting is just more spot and stalk, stay downwind from them. But they're not really that spooky of an animal because they're just so big that there's nothing that really scares them. This huge animal was actually too small to shoot but not so little it didn't send Bob packing once it spotted him. Getting in close to the buffalo is your adrenaline's going and you don't know what the buffalo's going to do and he turns and he comes walking towards you and it's like, well, he's too small, don't shoot it, but 
shoot it because it might run us over and if you don't they're so unpredictable you don't know what they're gonna do it was scary but at least it didn't it didn't come run us over or nothing it just kind of come and checked us out and got pretty close to us and stuff like that and it walked off they're so big it's they could run anything over you and your quad and it doesn't matter what's standing in front of it, it just run anything over like nothing that could stop it I don't think Bob Folkrod's hunting gear includes a Browning a bolt and 300 short mag Winchester 180 grain nozzler ballistic tip bullets Swarovski optics redhead endura skin base layers redhead clothing with Gore-Tex and Windstopper and a crooked horn bino system the bison is an animal that roams the imagination of every big game hunter Bob has traveled to the farthest reaches of northern Alberta to play out a drama as old as the oldest spear point, an encounter to the death with the largest animal on the North American grasslands. Well, one thing about the wood bison is it's like a lot of other animals, you know, like the Thule elk or the, the Roosevelt elk, you know, they've brought them back from almost being shot out. Not necessarily being poached off. I mean, back in those days, uh, people were hunting them for, uh, you know, table, for the, you know, meat for the table. And uh, so, you know, by having a national buffalo park where the, the buffalo can roam, basically, it's, it's brought them back to where we can have a hunting season like a lot of other animals. And, you know, the nice thing about it is if we keep doing things right, our children uh, will be able to hunt this and their children will be able to hunt them. Bob and Ryan have initiated a stalk on two buffalo, but they would be wise to remember that the wood bison is a herd animal. Oh man, ain't no sense of jacking that, huh? You see him go down? All right. I use a Winchester Nosler uh, combination, 180 grain ballistic tip. And, and when I hit him, I was uh, going for his lungs. I didn't expect him to fall down like that, but it had went up through and broke his neck at the same time. And that old ballistic just dropped him, boy. I've hunted up here for bear several times, but uh, and uh, we come up here for hopefully a, a crack at one of these. And, uh, and here he is. But I mean, this is a magnificent animal. I mean, look at the size of these things. I mean, my goodness, the head on that thing, you know? And the work is now just starting. We got a lot of work to do to full, full size body this. Bob Volkrod's Hunting Adventures is brought to you commercial free by these fine sponsors. Gore-Tex, Winchester Ammunition, Kinetrek, Kufaru, and L.J. Blessings Ranch. Though the wood bison is a recognized subspecies of the plains bison, some biologists feel they are too similar to warrant the distinction. In general, however, there are observable differences between the two. The wood bison is the bigger animal, features a larger hump centered more forward, and its horns are not covered by a curly mane in the manner of the plains bison. 
They're both success stories. We've, we've brought them back from almost extinction and where you can uh, have hunting season onto them. And once you see them uh, side by side, uh, you'll, you'll surely see the difference between a wood bison and an American bison. And it's just a privilege to be able to go out there and hunt them both. The buffalo is intimately connected to the human history of our continent, as guide Terrell Rahm can tell you. When I was a kid, we'd be riding, chasing cattle in these hills and every, in these washes. Why, you'd find buffalo bones, sometimes you'd find a buffalo head, um, you know, quite a few arrowheads. Some you can date, some in the middle. Arrowheads were sold over and traded at Fort Union back middle to early 1800s, and uh, you find them once in a while. And there are some buffalo jumps around here too. Just like in times of old, the grasslands of eastern Montana are quick to produce opportunities for the buffalo hunter. Younger bulls, they're, they're nice bulls, they're just not, I don't think they're what we're looking for. But when they're young, their horns come out and go straight up. And, and I guess their head kind of grow into their horns. Their, their head gets wider, their horns curl in, and then their big fluff of hair, you know, grows out. And, and if, if their horns come up and they're pretty wide uh, and it's full of hair and they've got a long, nice beard, and if they're a big animal, that's a trophy in anybody's book. Yeah, the wind's going right that way, in that direction. He's going to try to get it. He's going to try to get our scent going. Well, they must have winded us. Yeah, there they that's go. what they did. Yeah. They caught our scent. I knew he, when it come down wind like that, he was going to wind us. Well, we can do better than those anyway, so. They smell danger or they feel danger. Their, their tail will go in the air. Their tongue will come out. They'll, they'll start pawing the ground. And when two bulls are, you know, pairing off where they're going to fight, that's the way they act then, too. And I've seen these bison fight for hours. And, and hair will fly and, you know, they'll be chomping at each other with the horns. And you'd think they're really getting hurt, but shoot, their, their height on their necks are that thick. You know, they just, it's like probably getting a mosquito bite to us. We'll pass on these guys. Listen to them. something. You knew that he kept coming, coming, he was, you know, he was walking downwind, he was going to wind us. I didn't expect him to run though. Yeah. You know, I really didn't. Yeah. No, they, uh, they winded us and, and took off. I don't know, not used to human scent, I guess. Yeah. So we got, look for the bigger one, huh? We can do better than those. Okay. So we'll, we'll find one. Well, that was neat. Yeah. Transportation for all of Bob Bokrod's hunting adventures is provided by Victor Chevrolet. Check them out at VictorChevrolet.com. Bob Folkrod is in eastern Montana with Terrell Rahm hunting one of the great symbols of the American West. They've seen buffalo, but Terrell is convinced larger specimens can be found. Holy jeez. Man, look at the hair on him. Oh, he's a big one, right? Eh? Yeah. That's a dandy. That'll let's, work right there. Let's go up here a little bit farther and uh, 
Yeah. Get up get in up the on, slat. Yeah. Maybe hiding in the sagebrush. Yeah. Get a better shot. Yeah. 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 How far is he? 197. That's close enough. Wait until he turns broadside. Yeah, that big old creature, that's for sure. I got him now, I just wait for the right shot. Now he's, he, if he wins us, he's gone. Nope. Just a minute. Still grazing, here he turns. Here he's coming. Yeah, shakes. I went for that neck shot. It just, you know, I had a thing about watching old movies and watching him go down. But man, he he went down. Yep. Hey, congratulations. Thanks, man. <laughs> I tell you what, that's that's a big animal. That is big. People really don't realize how big they are. You know, that that, that thing will probably weigh 21, 2200 pounds. That's a lot of meat, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Does that mean we're having a buffalo steak? I don't know. We got a lot of work in front of us first, so. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to take a go down and take a look at him. I'll be right behind Gosh. you. <laughs> what a big animal! Look at the size of that thing, isn't he? Is he a monster? Oh my! Look at all this hair. Just uh -oh. the head on him is unbelievable. You know, the I mean the Ooh. boss of him like that, and they and you said they get to fighting and banging. I can't oh. imagine two two ton animals going head to head like that, eh? Yeah, the hair flies, and it doesn't seem to hurt them any because, you know, I've skinned these out, and the uh, height on the neck is a good inch thick, so it's... Look at that, how that's yeah. smoothed off like that. Is that broomed off like that, I guess? Yes, I guess. Huh. Yeah. Just been digging and working something. Dirt. Yeah. Big old flat spots on the sides. Well, I think of, you know, the, the bison like this, the Plains game bison, I think of, you know, a movie like Lonesome Dove, and and uh, you know, the Plains game people, when they came over in the covered wagons, how tough they must have been. Oh man, I couldn't imagine. Well, you know, if they happen to shoot one of these in the fall of the year, it'd last the family all through the winter. There's so much meat on this way. Yeah, and then the, and the clothing they made, you mm -hmm. know, out of the height and everything. Yep, that's you know? uh, just a monster of an animal. And then, and then too, you expect a modern day bullets and, and, and weapon like this to do its job, but you know, back then they was using flint locks and bows and arrows. I can't imagine shooting one of these off the back of a horse with an arrow. Yeah, exactly. Just... Although Bob completed his obsession quest taking over 80 animals with a rifle, his first love has always been bow hunting. He's teamed up with longtime friend and archery coach Mike Price to help make you a better bow shot. This week's archery lesson is brought to you by Heritage Archery Academy. And these great archery sponsors, Hoyt, Trueball, Easton, Limb Saver, Gateway Feathers, and Dirt Nap. Today we're gonna to talk about the shot process. So we've done all our homework. Uh, we've focused on our execution. We've already loaded our bow. Our bow is in our hand. We're hooked up in our release. We've range found that animal and we've committed that we've made that shot a thousand times. One of the things, one of the most important things I learned from Bob was that when we draw, if I'm shooting an animal in his living room, his dining room, he's in his atmosphere. I've gotta be careful, because when I see a mouse run across the living room, I can see it out of the corner of my eye and go, God dang, there's a mouse. But the whole thing is that you're hunting a deer in his living room where he's sitting watching the TV or whatever he's doing. The whole thing is, so when you set up the shot, we're already hooked up, we're ready to shoot the shot. You guys that are overbowed, too long, too much weight, is it better for the animal to see this? Ugh, and then come down? God, that's a lot of movement. That deer is gonna look up and go, oh, that son of a gun's in that tree. So he's gonna know and he's gonna spook off. You guys should be able to draw your bow 
Anchor. Set your pin on the target and draw your bow straight back to anchor. One of the most important things is keep the pin on the target before the shot. The pin stays on during the shot, stays on after. And during the shot is even in the draw cycle. If the animal's looking at you, is it better for the animal to see this? Or is it better for the animal for me to have the pin on before the shot? And now during the shot, which is in the draw process, pin is on there. I get back almost to full draw. I'm nervous nilly. Oh, and I let it go. Guess what? I still killed that animal. So the whole deal is, obviously we don't want to do that. We want to be able to come back. But if that deer looks up as I start drawing, don't stop. Come right to full draw and he's going to go, what's that? And I'm going to go, oh, you're dead. So you've killed that animal. When you're drawing on the animal, it keeps you calm. And it gives less motion for the deer to pick up that you're there. Remember, you're hunting them in their living room, their dining room, in their atmosphere. You're the outsider, so make your motions less. Keep the pin on the target before the shot, keep it on during, and most importantly, keep it on after. Stay focused, and you'll do better in your shot process. We're headed to South America, down to Paraguay, to hunt with my old friend, Rocky McBride. Rocky's done one of the most intense studies you've ever seen on Jaguar, but we're down there for the buffalo, the water buffalo. This will make my third buffalo, the Cape buffalo, the Australian buffalo, and I needed this for my South American buffalo for my obsession quest. That looks like a herd of them over there. Yeah, that brush line. Yeah. yeah. There's a, that's a pretty good bull with them. There's those buffalo right over there. Yeah. If we, I think we can stay long ahead of this brush, we're gonna have to get in it a little bit. The wind's just right, so if we get in it, we'll come out right, right on them. Well, they've been all through here, haven't they? Yeah, they're gonna stay. This is where they're staying and feeding out here. We got them now, unless the wind changes on us. Right, we can get right up on them. Yeah, there they are. To get the shot off was was pretty pretty exciting. It's they were kind of going back to the wood line, and we was on the edge of the wood line, and there was a cow in the way, there was a calf in the way, and first this twist, that twist, and so we. We figure we either go for a brain shot or go in the back of the ear and try to, to knock this animal down. And uh, it just happened up that it was perfect. It was the first time that he'd given us an actual real good shot. And so we tucked one in the back of the ear. Get, get the other stuff out of the way. You might try right there. Okay. Yeah, there I mean, it just took him off his feet. He no more than hit the ground, and it was like he's right back on his feet again, which, boy, that to everybody's surprise was <laughs> uh, that he got back up again. And uh, he started going toward the wood line. That's the last thing we wanted him to do was get inside that wood trying to go in there and find a, you know, a big buffalo like that can be, can be pretty dangerous. And when he was going by uh, broadside, we, we slipped one into his lung area, and that hurt him pretty bad, but it wasn't enough to, to keep him down. We knew he was hurting pretty bad, so we gave him some time. He got into the brush line. Uh, he's hit good, but he's gonna get, if he makes it in those woods, it's gonna be tough to get him out of there. For help with all of your hunt booking needs, Contact J&M Safaris at jmsafaris.com. We knew he was hurting pretty bad, so we gave him some time. He got into the brush line, and we went in after him. We could hear him in there kind of, you know, breaking brush and where he was, and we slipped in there and gave him one more shot to, to, to keep him down. And, you know, we have a, you know, a Paraguay buffalo. You know, that's a pretty darn big animal for this region or any region that you're actually gonna hunt in. Well, this is a big one. <laughs> well, I hope to tell you he's big. Yeah, I bet he's 10, 10 years old, never been a 2,000 pounds, and now the work's gonna begin. 
Well, what's going to be neat, Rocky, is I've got all three buffalo now, so, you know, they're all life-size, so they give the people, when they're talking about different areas, mm -hmm. and they give them a real perspective on what each other's look like. He's well, just like the cape, he just don't have the big boss. He know? doesn't have the boss. But He's got, got the a, weight, though. He sure got a hard head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's my third buffalo. I took the, the African cape buffalo, which has got a great big boss on the front of his head. And, and then last year, the Australia buffalo that's, you know, really wide and long. And now we got down here to Paraguay and this buffalo, and he's just like a Cape buffalo. He's muscular, he's got everything except that great big boss on the front of his head. And it, it takes a lot to, to put one down and to keep him down. So uh, that's why they call him dangerous game. You know, it's quite an adventure trying to hunt the buffalo. It's, a, it's another thing once the, the buffalo is down on the ground. I mean, you got a 2,000 pound plus animal hits the ground, that's where the work starts. You know, the, the guys came in and, you know, we life sized him out because it's going to be life sized for the Obsession Quest series. So, what do you do with all that meat? That's one question that everybody had asked me in a seminar. Well, you know, in a couple of days, we're going to have a barbecue and the, the workers are all going to have some meat. They cut it up into strips and dried it, and there was still a lot left. So, we, we drove down to an Indian, Indian village that, uh, and donated some, uh, some meat down there. There was about 80 people down there. Um, that they're living in uh, an Indian village down there. And Rocky tries to keep a good uh, correspondence with him. He turns around and, and hires him to do some stuff in the fields and different things. And it's always a pleasure. They like to see him drive in, especially when he's got a big hind quarter of a water buffalo. So that was a pretty exciting knowing that uh, it hit the ground, but everything that could be ate was, was definitely uh, divided up to everyone. Well, if you ever get the opportunity to come down here and hunt with Rocky McBride, whether it's for, you know, brocket deer or water buffalo or even pigeons or anything, it, remember it's an adventure. It's an adventure of leaving your home state, getting on an airplane, flying into another country, seeing what the country's got to offer, eating the food, everything that goes with that is an adventure. So keep your expectations, uh, you know, high as far as adventure, uh, but also accept what animals they have. You're going down here to Paraguay, it's an adventure just to see this wildness, uh, the habitat that, you know, a lot of people never, never get on. It's untouched wilderness, and to be able to see places like that in the world today, that's an adventure all by itself. So no matter what, what animal or what weapon you choose, keep the adventure high at heart. That's, that's what you're really going there for. After your successful hunt of a lifetime, Contact Wes Good at KanadiStudio.com for the finest taxidermy in the business. Be sure to follow Bob and all his adventures at BobFolkRod.com and on Facebook.